Welcome back to Champions Field. We are just about underway on this afternoon's game. What recovery is going to be kicking off to St. John's to begin this contest. Take a look at the offensive starters for Duffel St. John's. They're going to be led by quarterback Grant Alm. Had a tremendous start to his season in those first two games. Last time I was here, actually, I got to see that shootout between St. John's and LCC, and Alm was absolutely masterful that afternoon. Obviously, a much different type of games they've played the two after that um, in, in the kind of the blowout losses that they have suffered. But as Alm goes, this Blue Jay team will go, and he has the capabilities of having a big game this afternoon. Well, you hit the nail on the head. They beat a really good LCC team in that shootout and then sort of stumbled the last couple weeks. So they've got to find their identity. It's the same as Fort Recovery here this afternoon. The rest of the starters for the St. John's offense Running back T.J. Wirtz, wide receivers Drew Boggs and Cohen Martz. Out on the wings, Connor Gaynor, Tyler Lindemann. As this one is going to be a short kickoff, St. John's is going to return that, and they are going to have their first possession out right around the 30-yard line. The line that's going to be trying to open some holes and protect all this afternoon, Carson White, Alex Martz, Kobe O'Connor, Josh Mueller, and Austin Arnold. Gavin Evers on the stop there for the Indians. The Blue Jays come out for their first possession. All in the shotgun as he'll be all afternoon. Tried the hard count to start the game and draws it with a free five yards. Nice job by Delta St. John's to get some free yardage here to begin the game. Yeah, it appeared to be number 56. Hopefully I say his name right. Kikela. Number 56. Got in the neutral zone. So now first and five for all. He's going to roll, carry this one himself. Had a little bit of a space, but Fort Recovery did a nice job of closing that up and limiting Alm to a short gain. Thanks to that five-yard penalty, though, it'll bring up second and short for the Blue Jays. Hard nagel on the stop along with Judy. Yeah, they did a really good job stringing it out, like you said, Nate, and holding him there to a little gain. Saw Alm right there able to use his legs, and he is a mobile quarterback more than capable of picking up yardage, but only 42 yards gained so far on the ground for him this season. He's going to hand this one off as they're going to move off the left side. And that is going to lead to a first down. Tonight's first downs are brought to you by Layfield Industrial Supplies, with locations in Coldwater and Greenville. Breaker Judy on the stop, but not until... St. John's reeling off their first first down of the contest. So TJ Wirtz with the first carry, picked up the first down for the Blue Jays. Wirtz is the second leading rusher on the St. John's team. He has 147 yards. They kind of got a two-headed monster between him and Feathers as Feathers leads the team with 158. This is going to be all though, as he had a hold and brings this one all the way into Fort Recovery territory. He's going to be taken down just shy of the 20-yard line. Yeah, Troy Holman running him out at the boundary right there on the near side. Good job on the offensive line opening up that quarterback keeper, that quarterback draw. Going to see this quite a bit of St. John's this afternoon. They like that hard count, trying to see if they can't get the defense to jump, being over aggressive before they reset. I'm going to keep this one on the ground. See Wirtz get a very short game, maybe only about a yard on that carry. Breaker Judy on the stop. Wholesale substitutions coming in for Fort Recovery. Fort Recovery coming into today's game 0-4, as we mentioned in the pregame, but two one-possession losses to begin the season. And They've still been able to score as we see another false start, this time off of the right end. That DN was just trying to get a little too aggressive as I think they're anticipating those runs and are hoping to get to the backfield in a hurry. It appeared to be Lockfeld, number 77. Jumped a little quick there on the near side defensive end position. So second and nine becomes second and four as Olm looks to the sideline to get the play. 
So far, so good for Delphi St. John's. Olm takes a snap, gonna hand this one off to Wirtz up the middle, and he stumbled. Only able to pick up a couple of yards as he got tripped up on his own feet, it looked like, as he had a lane. Not sure if it had been big enough for him to go all the way, but it did look like he had enough room there to pick up the first down, but bring up third and short for the Blue Jays. Reese Wendell stepping up, making the tackle for the visitors. This Delphi St. John's offensive line doing a great job creating holes and getting some space for their team as Alm's going to roll to the right. That one gets ate up quickly as he tries to cut it up the sure middle. Did. And he's going to get stomped at the 10-yard line, and I believe he is going to be short of that fourth down. So decision time for the Blue Jays here early in the game. Kikela on the stop. Good job there by Reese Wendell turning it back inside along with Ethan Hartnagel. Fourth and short for the Blue Jays. Yeah, this is where if you're for recovery, you got to be disciplined and play on the snap of the football. 8.30 to go here in the opening quarter. St. John's on their opening drive. Fourth and short. Alm's going to just go right up the middle and gets a push to get some help from his teammates, and he's going to pick up the yard he needed and then a little bit more as it is going to be first and goal inside the 10. Gabe Kanapke on the stop as well as host of teammates. So Delphi St. John's able to convert the fourth down. Now they get a fresh set of downs here as they're trying to get into the end zone. Alm waits back in the shotgun. Moving some traffic around. Alm. Gets the call from the sidelines. Going to take the snap, keep it himself right up the middle. Right off that left side, a hole opens up, and Grant Alm able to walk in nearly untouched for a Blue Day. Yeah, they're, they're seeing something in the press box on how Fort Recovery's lining up defensively, and they're taking advantage of it, the Jays are, and punched one in right there by their offensive leader, Mr. Alm. Tonight's touchdowns are brought to you by Leland Smith Insurance. Your first call for all your insurance needs. Braylon Metzger out for the extra point. This one is up and it is good as Delphi St. John's takes the opening kickoff on a nice drive, keeps it on the ground the entire way and finishes in the end zone as they are on top seven to nothing. We'll step aside and be back. OSN. Welcome back. Today's scoreboard sponsor is Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. An impressive opening drive by the Blue Jays ends up in a touchdown. And now it's going to be Fort Recovery's turn to see if they can answer. Yeah, really good job with execution and listen to what the coach and staff you know, drew up in game plans. They did a real good job with the cadence calls, drew a couple offsides, and that was definitely beneficial in that uh, long driving touchdown by Ohm. Or recover, able to take the kickoff, and they're going to be brought down around the 32-yard line. So now it's going to be for recovery's turn as they are going to be led out by quarterback Troy Holman. It's Troy Holman a, has had an impressive year, almost 1,000 yards of total offense. He gets it done through the air with over 600 yards passing. And he's also the team's leading rusher with over 300 yards on the ground. St. John's has seen a few rushing quarterbacks already this year. The, they all, we mentioned the shootout with uh, LCC and had to deal with Carson Parker that day. So they're used to seeing this. We'll see how the defense is able to adjust and try to contain him. Camden Gable on that last stop for the Blue Jays on that kickoff. Quick screen outside. That one's going to be taken up after about a five-yard gain. Going to bring up second and five for Fort Recovery. Gagne coming up for the stop. Grise was the recipient of that pass. Holman was able to get that out quickly out into the flat. 
Olmo with the man in motion. Going to hand this one off. The sweep out to the left. A lot of space as he's able to get the edge as Reese Guggenbiller able to pick up first down for Fort Recovery. Donye on the stop. Got him by the ankles. He doesn't get him by the ankles. It allows him to turn the corner on that far side. He may get another 10, 12 yards, partner. Good execution there by the Indians. So the Indians able to pick up a first down as they are off to a good start on their opening drive as well. Holman. Sets the man in motion once again. This time he's going to keep it himself. Tries to work up the middle, cuts back, gets it up over the 50-yard line. As Holman made a good decision that time to pull that one back and had a nice gain on first down. TJ Words coming up, making the stop. Yeah, you mentioned earlier, look, I mean, look at the schedule coming up for St. John's. Next week they go to Anna. The following week they go to Coldwater. Then they play Minster here. That's a that's a brutal stretch coming up here for the for the Blue Jays. Second and five for the Indians. Holman back in the shotgun. Going to take the snap, going to look to throw it again. This time can't be gathered in as it looked like it was intended for Alex Gerke. And Gerke not able to bring that one in. As I think he kind of got his head turned that time. Maybe he's trying to look where he could go <laughs> upfield before well, he had that, that one secured. Well, going to take a shot, one of the two, because March was right there bearing down on him. But I'm like you, took his eye off the football. 5.40 left to go here in the opening quarter. Third and five for the Indians. St. John's looking for a stop, trying to see if they can get their offense back on the field. Holman takes a snap. He's going to drop back, going to look to air this one out. Has a lot of traffic in the backfield. Avoids the first defender. He's going to roll, keeping his head up, and is going to get chased out of bounds. Great pursuit. And it looked like the official was reaching, like maybe he thought about that flag for the late hit, but decided against it. Fortunate call for St. John's, and that's going to bring up fourth down for the Indians. Well, I think wrapping the arms around as a defender right there probably saved himself from that 15-yard late hit out of bounds. That happened to be Alex Martz on the stop. So Alex Garkey is going to be back for the punt as the St. John's defense gets the job done. Punt is off. This one is going to take a roll right into the hands of St. John's. Going to recover, work to the right side. Has some space. Looks to cut it back up. And evades a couple of other tacklers before finally taken down was Gaynor. Lip Grant Ford Camp, the freshman, on the stop there for Ford Recovery. Like you mentioned, pretty nice return right there, breaking a couple tackles, getting as much as he could right there. Cut it up to about to 22, didn't he? Or I'm sorry, 27. So now Delphi St. John's comes back out. Last drive ended in a touchdown, and that was the first town and first, excuse me, touchdown since all the way back in week two against LCC. They've been shut out in their previous two games. So had to feel good to finally be able to put something together and get some points on the board. Looking to add to it here. All going to go to the air. And that oh, one is boy. picked off, and that is going to be a pick six by the Indians. What a great job that time. Reese he jumped Wendell. that route as Wendell read it, was able to get his hands on it, looked for a second like he might drop it in the bobble, but able to gather it back in and take it in for an Indians touchdown. Yeah, heck of an athletic play there by that young man. Like you said, he was. we weren't so sure if he was going to be able to secure that, and he did and found his way to the end zone. So the offense couldn't get in, but the defense getting it done for the Indians as Reese. Tonight's touchdowns are brought to you by Leland Smith Insurance. Your first call for all your insurance needs. Alex Garkey out for the extra point. His kick is up, and it is good. So what looked like it could be a potential uh, game-turning type of drive for St. John's as they were coming out trying to add on to that 7-0 lead one play in.
into the turnover that went for a touchdown. We are all tied up with 5.09 left to go here in the opening quarter. Time out on the field. We'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Back today's scoreboard is sponsored by Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Fort Recovery able to take the interception back for a touchdown. The time this one up is seven. So they'll get ready to kick this away to Delphi St. John's. And Gil, we were talking off air. It was interesting, you know, Delphi St. John's comes out on that very first play, tries to put it into the air when they had so much success on that first drive on the ground. Yeah, I think they were trying to sneak one in there with that little out pattern and Fort Recovery did a really good job adjusting and making that pick six. So Kanapke able to gather that one in, a little squib kick along the ground. He brings it up to right around the 30 yard line. So Delphi St. John's gonna come back out, try to put the interception behind them and get things going back the right way on offense. Hardenagle and Brody Hart on the stop. All oh, in the shotgun, back, flanked by Wirtz. You know, we were talking before we went on air, you know, how young are both of these ball clubs? St. John's with 10 seniors, and I think we had 12, I counted, for Fort Recovery. That's young. This one's going to be a handoff. This is going to go to a Lindemann. Lindemann doesn't get a lot that time, but does get some positive yardage after about a two-yard game. Breaker Judy, the 6'3 freshman. Officially a three-yard gain brings up second and seven for the Blue Jays. Been all over the place so far defensively for the Indians, along with Ethan Hartnagel on the stop and Grant Fortcamp. Clock running here in the first quarter. 4.30 left to go, all tied up at seven. All has the play now. Everybody set, snap comes. Going to hand this one off to Wirtz. And Wirtz met immediately in the backfield, but he's able to shed that first tackler. Oh, and the ball's and on the ground. he's going to fumble that one as he had a whole lot of traffic back there and a second turnover by the Blue Jays. And the Indians will have terrific field position. Well, it all started with the senior play of Connor Kakela right there, slowing that running back down. And as he got away from him, got a little bit loose with the football and got it stripped. And put it on the deck and Fort Recovery with a big turnover right there. You know, you gotta wonder if that first drive, if the hard count by St. John's really was kind of throwing that defensive line of Fort Recovery off, because since then, they've been ready for it and they've gotten a lot of pressure back there. Yeah, they've adjusted to it. So now Holman's gonna come out, gonna try to lead a scoring drive here for the Indians as they have the ball on the 38 yard line, excuse me, 34 yard line. He's gonna hold this one himself. He's gonna move off the right side, has a hole, has another one, sheds the blocker, and he's gonna go all the way in for the touchdown. Yeah, the little guy in motion and then the RPO right there and he kept the football and the offensive line opened up a big gap on the right side and he found his way through the seam and it was a foot race and he outran the defenders to the end zone. Troy Holman so dangerous on his feet. Garkey out for the extra point as Holman is the holder. Garkey waits for the snap. Snap is up, it is down, kick is up, and it is no good. So Garkey not able to connect on the extra point to keep it at 13 to seven. 408 left to go here in the opening quarter. Both teams getting some points up on the scoreboard. We're gonna step aside and be back on WOSN. Tonight's instant replays are brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpog, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where homestyle happens here. 
Not a lot of time has come off the clock here off these last two scores. Fort Recovery able to score quickly off on a pick six, and then two plays into the very next drive by Delphi St. John's. They force a fumble. One play later, another touchdown, and just like that, Fort Recovery with the six-point lead. Yeah, you can definitely tell the momentum shifted, hadn't it, off those two turnovers, and Fort Recovery's, as a result, has punched both of those in there. St. John's looks so good on an opening drive, was getting things done on the ground, lots of holes. There's another kickoff on the ground. Gonna be gathered in one more time. And this one is gonna be Gagne able to gather that one in again. And brings that up. So St. John's gonna come out again, last two times out on the field. They, their drives ended very quickly on turnovers. That led to almost immediate points for the Indians. They're going to look to get back to how things were going during that opening drive. you got to love that name, Breaker Judy. <laughs> this kid is going to be a player. He's in on the stop again. 6'3 freshman. Moves really well. Olm sends a man in motion. Going to keep this one himself. Going to work off that right side. Has some space, fights for some extra yardage, picks it up. A great run there on first down to bring up second and short. Guggenbiller on the stop. So All I'm trying the hard count again. As now you see Fort Recovery is really adjusted to that. Probably won't see too many other uh, jumps unless uh, St. John's changes some things up. This one's going to go to Wirtz. Wirtz going to fight through, finds some, tries to get some extra yardage. And thanks to that extra effort, stopped it from being a negative yardage play, able to get back up to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Hardnagel met him in the hole and dropped him. Nice tackle by that young man, 5'11", junior. Holm looks to the sideline. Holm looks to throw. Has to move around. Had traffic right at his feet. Had to move to his right. That was a tough throw as he wasn't quite able to get his feet set before he had to let that one go. As that pass was intended for Cohen Martz just off of his fingertips. And St. John's is going to be forced to punt. Yeah, Kakela was bearing down on him from that left defensive end and he had to get rid of the football. That timing there with that pressure got the pass there a little bit too wide. So Braylon Metzger, also the punter for St. John's back, takes a snap, sends this one away. And that's going to be off the fingertips that time. Of, that's going to be Garkey. As Garkey Able to gather that one back in, though. Moves up for a few yards. So short return by Alex Garkey for the Indians as the offense is going to come back out. And I'll tell you what, you know, it looked like, at least on that first drive, that St. John's kind of had Holman contained, kind of knew where he was going, able to get their hands on him. But he showed the next time he got the football how elusive he can be. You betcha. Yeah, he definitely used his athleticism. That last stop, Josh Mueller in there, along with Maddox Kruger. Holman back in the shotgun, sets a man in motion. He's going to hand this one off. Guggenbiller works around that edge, cuts it back up. He's able to pick up about five yards on the carry. O'Connor on the stop, along with Alex Martz. Reese Guggenbiller had not had a lot of rushing yards coming into this game. Only uh, 12 yards on the ground. But we've seen a couple of nice carries out of him here in the first quarter. Yeah, he's definitely got some breakaway speed, and he likes to get that corner turned. Holman going to hand this one off up the middle. And this one's going to go to Hartnagel. As Ethan Hartnagel... Able to pick up a few yards. Going to bring up third and long for the Indians. 
Wirtz, TJ Wirtz on the stop there for the Jays. Nice job staying at home defensively, being disciplined. Delphi St. John's, this defense held up strong one other time to force the punt. Trying to do it again here on third and long. Holman back in the shotgun. Four wide receivers. Going to take the snap. Going to look to air it out. Pump fakes. Goes along the sideline, and this one's going to go out of bounds. Nice defense by the Blue Jays to force the punt. As the punt team is going to come out for the Indians. Yeah, I was trying to see who partner that was on the coverage over there. Really good job staying disciplined, running stride for stride with that receiver. Alex Garke, Garke back deep, or excuse me, back for the punt for the Indians as we see Connor Gagne back uh, deep for the Blue Jays. Garke takes the snap, lets the punt go. Nice high kick. As Gagne get able to get underneath it. Calls the fair catch. So the Blue Jays going to come out for their possession as the offense has sputtered a little bit here towards the end of the first quarter. Look to get something going here as we head towards the second. Just under a minute left to go in the opening quarter. You know, you got these shades on today. I need to get you a pair of those Dion Sanders shades <laughs> today. You know what? I need to order a pair and order a Christmas present. I mean, you know, I'll, I am not opposed to the nickname Primetime. Just tell you don't that, take it buddy. personal. Don't take it personal. <laughs> No, I'm joking though, but he's doing a heck of a job out there. Yes, and it's, he is. And it's gonna the recruiting. He's gonna get some big time recruits. Oh, I'm gonna call this one himself. Has a hole, but a great job that time to fill the open space by the Indians, able to limit all in that time. Yeah, to you're what talking. Looked like was gonna be a big game. <laughs> yeah, you're talking about Brody Hart. Looked like he got shot out of a cannon. He did a really good job coming up and getting low and making the stop right there. Got him below the knees. Because if he doesn't get him, there's a big gap there. Second and seven for the Blue Jays. All going to look around, gets the call in from the sidelines. Going to get everybody reset here. Eight seconds left to go on the play clock. Takes a snap, rolls to his right. Going to carry this one himself, has a hole. Fights through some contact that time before he's finally brought down around the 40-yard line. And that is going to bring the first quarter to a close. It's been an eventful first quarter with the Indians taking two turnovers and turning them into 13 points. They have the lead 13 to 7. We'll step aside and be back with the second quarter on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Wabas Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Second quarter just about underway here at Champions Field as the Blue Jay offense faces a third and short here from the 40-yard line. Oh, back in the shotgun, joined by Wirtz. It's been a while since we've seen Delphus able to pick up a first down. Be big here if they can keep this drive alive. Oh, going to carry it himself. Moves off the right side. Two, three different tacklers before they're able to finally bring him down just over the 45-yard line, down at the 47. You got to love when you got a big physical back there. It's a big presence and will lead the way, and that's exactly what T.J. Wirtz does. He finds a way and makes contact with the linebackers or the DBs to create those open holes and that's just an example right there, what he did to get home free. Oh, I'm going to go to the air. Going to go deep. Has a step, has a receiver. Long pass and dropped. That time, Connor Gagne had the step, had that one in his hands. But I think he saw all that green in front of him. And as he was looking forward to where he was going to go, couldn't quite secure it. And a big missed opportunity for the Blue Jays. Yeah, a little hitch route there. He hesitated and then just broke deep and got behind the secondary. Yeah, that, that's a heck of a throw right there. He secures that. It's like you said, that's six points. So 
Now second and 10 for the Blue Jays. As they're going to get reset for receivers with T.J. Wurntz in the backfield alongside Grant Alm. Alm takes a snap. This one's going to go to Wurtz. Wurtz works off the left side. He has a big hole. Gets around two guys, has the edge. One man to beat if he can beat him to the spot. And Alex Garke that time able to stop a surefire touchdown. You know, he saved the touchdown right there, but I'm telling you what, Mr. Wurtz made him tackle him. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he got physical with him, and he's like, you know what, you're going to bring me down, you're going to tackle me, and that's exactly what that young man did, but that's a heck of a run right there. It was just great lateral movement by Wurtz that time to even be able to get to that edge, and then the foot race, he, had, he delivered a blow right as he was taking one. So now St. John's in great position at the 15-yard line. Looking to see if they can't time this one up. Holm takes a snap, going to carry it himself. Goes off the right side, makes a man miss, has another one to beat. Goes to the contact, reaches for the goal line. And they're going to say that he is down inside the one-yard line as all made a couple of guys miss, tried to drag another one into the end zone and was taken down just shy. Yeah, he tried to stretch it as far as he could to get there. Give credit to Fort Recovery. They kept him out of the end zone. Nice run by Alm. So now first and goal as Alm picks up first down. So Delphi St. John's will have four opportunities to punch this one in, but you got to think they'd love to just get it done right here. Alm's going to take it in himself, and he does. Really good job by the offensive line, opening up that seam, allowing that quarterback to run that quarterback draw to success and crossing the end line for a Blue Jay touchdown. Tonight's touchdowns are brought to you by Leland Smith Insurance, your first call for all your insurance needs. It's all set up by the big run by T.J. Wirtz. Metzger, kick is up and it is good. So Delphi St. John's on the back of T.J. Wirtz, able to bring it all the way in for the touchdown, and they take the one-point lead. Got a timeout on the field. We'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Tonight's first downs are brought to you by Layfield Industrial Supplies with locations in Coldwater and Greenville. It is Canal Days weekend here in Delphis, but here at Champions Field, right now all the festivities are going on as St. John's just went up one, 14 to 13. As they're getting ready to kick this one off to the Indians. Metzger is going to line up the kickoff as uh, Fort Recovery is going to have Alex Garkey and Reese Guggenbiller back deep. This one's going to be filled by Garkey. Garkey going to bring it up on along the right side. Has some blockers in front of him. Tried to break it to the outside, but St. John's able to bring him down as he's going to be stopped right around the 36, 37 yard line. Gillis on the stop. So now Troy Holman going to come back out. We've already saw him able to get things done on the ground as he ran one in for a touchdown back in the first quarter. Yeah, both quarterbacks are real similar, aren't they? Both, both really athletic, uses their feet as well as their arm. Holman's going to... Display that arm right there as he splings this one out. It is going to be caught by Grise. Grise is able to get this one out across midfield and pick up his first down for the Indians. Gable on the stop along with Gagne. Didn't take him long to get that ball out here to the flat, did it? Man, he spun it. Yeah, very he spun quick, it quick. Very quick release. So Holman in the backfield along with Reese Wendell. Wendell had the pick six earlier. 
They're going to try the opposite side this time, but a nice read by St. John's. They're able to get their hands on that one and knock it down for incompletion. Joel Schrader got that big paw up there on the football and batted it down. 6-3 senior, big play right there. 9.32 left to go in the half. The Indians already a one big play here on this drive, looking to keep things going on second and ten. A lot of open field in there down the middle of the field. Let's see if Fort Recovery doesn't try to get down the middle of the field here. This one's going to be a handoff. Rizé has lots of space, makes a man miss. A missed tackle as the Indians able to take this one all the way down to the six-yard line. It'll be first and goal. A great run that time by Caden Grise as he didn't have a gigantic lane but used what he had and made a couple of guys miss. And a big pickup for the Indians. Yeah, he turned it into a foot race, didn't he? And a couple missed tackles there. He got past that secondary, and St. John had to chase him down. Fortunately, got him down there at the six-yard line. This is where Holman can be really dangerous. It's a threat to run inside the 10-yard line. A lot of moving pieces for the Indians to try to keep track of. And here is Holman. As he fights through the middle. He reaches for the goal line. He's going to be taken down at the one-yard line. Kind of almost an exact replica of what we saw on the other side as Alm took it and was able to get it down to the one. This time, Holman, it's his turn. Sets up the Indians for second and short from the one. Yep, using his legs, going behind the offensive line. Good job by the men up front, creating that seam for him to get as much as he could. Second and goal for Holman. Holman going to take the snap, going to carry it himself. Works through some traffic. St. John's does a great job to fill that space sure and did. deny him the end zone. Sure did. A host of Blue Jays led by Kobe O'Connor. So now it's going to bring up third down and goal for the Indians. you got to think this is going to be two down territory and not sure that they may do too much different than they have on the previous two. Yeah, how big a stand could this be for the home Jays if they could keep them out of the end zone? Holman takes a snap, calls his own number, and this time goes in untouched as Fort Recovery picks up another touchdown. As we are going back and forth here at Champions Field. You yeah, took that one over the left side, over the left tackle. Good job pushing that defender to the inside, letting him run off the backside of the offensive lineman to the end zone. And it looks like because of that missed extra point the last time they were out there that the Indians, they're keeping the offense out on the field, and they're going to go for two here. Holman breaks the huddle. So they moved over to the near, near hash here. Holman going to throw. It's going to be a jump ball, and this one's going to fall incomplete. He was look, looking for Guggenbiller, but a great defensive play by the Blue Jays denies him the two-point conversion. And so it is going to be a 19-14 Indians lead. Yeah, that was a great play defensively. It appeared to be number 15, Braylon Metzger, on the break up there. You know, Gil, it looks like we have the makings of what could be another shootout, shootout here. As both these offenses have seemed to found their footing, we've seen some turnovers, but not too much from either to the defenses here, at least in the first half. But is it me, or are we seeing very similar style offensively? You know what I'm saying? The plays and the execution-wise, I mean, right now, it's going through the quarterbacks. You know what I'm saying? Everything is being set up with the feet of the quarterbacks and big runs. We've seen big runs by both running backs on each team. Yeah, it's a little bit of everything. We've seen the big play. We've seen turnovers. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen, you know, the deep ball. You know, St. John's just missed one that they should have had their last time out. We've seen the long runs. So we're getting a, a pretty much a, a taste, taste of, of just a, just about everything out here. <laughs> What's so that word, Heinz half. variety? You know, we're getting to see it all. Makes for a fun football game, sure that's does. for sure. It sure does. Beautiful day, too. 
7.40 left to go here in the half at Champions Field as Fort Recovery gets ready to kick it off to Delphus. As the Blue Jays wait back, another squib kick, this one on the ground. Gagne works it around to the near sideline, gets to the 30-yard line before he's forced out of bounds. And that's where Alm will come out one more time to try to lead his team down the field, see if he can't give them the lead. Hard Nagel and Brody hard on the stop. Run him out at this near side boundary. 19-14 on the Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard. Alm. Got the play from the sideline. Takes a snap, going to hand this one off. This one ends up in the hands of number five. As I have put my roster on the wrong hand, that is Colin Feathers. Colin Feathers actually the leading rusher for this Blue Jay team coming into today, but the first time we've called his name so far. He is going to actually be stopped for a one-yard loss to bring up second and 11. Sure was. Reese Wendell stepping up, making that solo tackle for the Indians. Three wide receivers on the near side, one on one on the far sideline. Oh, he's going to hold this one himself. Moves it up. We got a flag on the field, though. And that is usually in the area of where we're going to have a hold call. And we'll wait for, and it is. So that is going to be a big penalty for the Blue Jays as that will mark them back quite a bit here. They're going to go back near the 20-yard line. Bring up second and long. So these are the types of mistakes that if you're Delphi St. John's, you can't afford to have. Those are sometimes can be drive killers. Oh, going to go to the air again. Going to go deep. And just gets a little turned around at Tyler Lindemann. Not able to find that one till it was too late as it's going to fall incomplete. Yeah, he was looking to the inside shoulder and the football went to the outside shoulder. And like you said, he lost track of it in flight. Just couldn't get to it. 6.36 left to go here in the half. Third and long for the Blue Jays. The Indians would love to be able to get a stop here and give themselves a chance to put some more points on the board going into halftime. Yeah, you got to be careful that you don't create a turnover situation here. And it looks like Coach Schulte's going to take a timeout. That's going to be the first timeout of the half for St. John's. They take the timeout. We will as well. We'll be back on WOSN. Tonight's touchdowns are brought to you by Leland Smith Insurance. Your first call for all your insurance needs. So Delta St. John's takes the timeout, a big third and long play. I want to make sure everybody is on the same page as they have the one-on-one -on -one matchup on that far side. You gotta wonder if they're gonna take a look at that one or try to see if they can't spring maybe Alm for the long run. And it is gonna be a pass. Alm, he's gonna have to run. Gets this one out to Feathers, Feathers. He's going to be tackled, has a nice gain on third down, but going to be short of the first. So we'll see if St. John's wants to punt or if they're going to try to go for it. And here comes the punt team. Wendell on the stop. So it looked like initially they were trying to exploit that one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside, but the pressure from the Indians got to Alm quickly. He had to pull it down, roll to the opposite side. Even after a big completion, because of that hold penalty, that wasn't going to be enough to bring in. Brings up fourth and five. So Metzger back for the punt. Takes a snap. Sends it off. As he is going to send it near that far sideline where it's going to go out of bounds at the 31-yard line. 5.46 left to go here in the half as Fort Recovery is going to come out. They're going to have plenty of time on the clock. They have all their timeouts. And so far, their offense, really, when it's been clicking, Delphi St. John's hasn't had much of an answer. 
No, and you're exactly right. I mean, they're playing with, with high rhythm right now, and St. John's has to find a way to get a stop here and get the ball back. A lot of time left here in this first half. It's only a one possession game. Troy Holman back in the shotgun alongside Reese Wendell. Send Guggenbiller in motion. Going to keep it himself. Holman works up to the middle. St. John thought they had him stop. Holman able to somehow get free, but a nice pursuit that time by the Blue Jays to the outside as Holman not able to pick up any type of extra yardage before he's tackled. But there is an injured St. John's player on the turf, so they're going to go out and check on him. Hopefully he's okay. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back to Champions Field. Connor Gagne was the injured Blue Jay, had to be helped off the field. He looks pretty gimpy, didn't look like he was able to put a lot of weight on there. He already had a brace on that knee. Hopefully Connor's going to be okay. Thoughts and prayers go out to him. Hopefully we, it's one of those things that maybe just in the moment hurts a little bit more. Maybe they can get him back. Yeah, let's wish him a speedy recovery and getting back in this football game, if not today in the near future. Quick throw goes to the outside. Rize able to break a couple of tackles, and he gets this one out to the 44-yard line in a Citizens National Bank first down. Nice play by Fort Recovery that time to move the sticks. Cohen Martz on the stop there for the Blue Jays. Fort Recovery's had some pretty nice success with those quick passes out to the flats. You know, usually you only see maybe a three, four-yard game by the time the uh, defensive backs are able to recover, but some missed tackles has led to some big gains on those plays for the Indians. Well, you've said it well. I mean, he's he's being quick getting rid of that football, and that's part of it on how they can break them tackles. He's not messing around with it. He's getting it out to his receivers. And we're going to have a timeout by the Indians as it looks like there might have been some miscommunication in the backfield, and that play clock was coming to an end. So for recovery, going to take the timeout. They want to talk about things. We'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Today's scoreboard sponsor is Wombash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. First and 10 for the Indians is Fort Recovery. Coming out of the timeout. Wendell shifts to the right. Holman going to go to the air. Quick strike. Able to just get a hand on it was Alex Garkey. Not able to gather it in, though, so that one's going to go as an incompletion. But if you up. notice, when he threw the ball, he threw it away from the defender. He threw it to the outside where there was only one person who was going to get their hands on it. That happened to be his teammate. He just couldn't secure it with both hands. Yeah, because that's actually kind of the exact type of pass that St. John's threw when Alm got picked off for the pick six. Should have been on the outside, ended up being on the inside. Tip ball went back all the way for the touchdown. Garkey goes out wide. Holman. Takes a snap. Another quick pass out to the right. This one oh is high. Boy. St. John's had that red all the way. And they are able to drop him for a three-yard loss. I'll tell you, Mr. Boggs has made two outstanding open field plays. The injury to Gagne right there earlier that we saw, he made an open field tackle that saved a big run by Holman and then just breaking up that pass into the flats right there. Yeah, I got to be really impressed with how he's playing defense here as that was a big loss, bring up third and long for the Indians as this could be a big stop for St. John's to try to get the ball back before halftime. Holman going to drop back, looks to air it out. Gets forced out to his right, throws it wide, wide open receiver, as that is Guggenbiller, who got left all alone along that sideline, cuts it back up towards the middle of the field, picks up a few more yards. Give him a lot of credit because the route he ran, he saw the scramble, and what's, what's the receiver told to do, come back and rotate back to the football, and he sure did and did it very well. Good pitch and catch. And that play. Kept alive by the legs of Troy Holman. Not only can he get upfield to pick up some yardage, gives his receiver some extra time back there in the scramble drill, can lead to some big plays as well. Holman's going to pull this one down. But it is read all the way by Delphi St. John's as they come up with a big sack and a big loss on first down. 
Going to bring up a second and long for the Indians. As you saw Feathers get into the backfield quickly for that stop. Sure was. That's a TFL right there, big time. That's a four-yard loss. Yeah, Holman is not easy to tackle in space that time as they just read that well, was able to beat him to the spot. Holman in the shotgun. Going to shift Wendell to his left. He's going to keep it, going to go to the air. And another open receiver. This time it's going to be Steinbrunner who fumbles it, but Fort Recovery able to jump on it. And recovery was going to be by number 67, Gabe Kanapke. And that is a fortunate play for the Indians. Yeah, Austin Schaefer with the initial stop, forcing that fun, fumble, excuse me. Great hustle there by Gabe Kanapke, like you said, hustling over and getting on the turf to secure that football for the Indians. Oh, we have a timeout on the field, as I believe it was St. John's it was who called the timeout. They want to try to preserve as much time as they can. As they know, as they know coming out of uh, the locker room there into the third quarter, they're going to have to kick this one off to Fort Recovery, so hoping for maybe another opportunity here before halftime to get some points. You know, we saw a whole lot of scoring in that first quarter. And at the beginning part of the second quarter looked like it was going to kind of continue, but both defenses have done a nice job clamping down. We saw some big plays for losses as these lines have been able to finally get some pressure in the backfield. Well, I think, you know, they come out with high emotion, both teams, and they've settled down, like you said, in this second quarter. And it's, it's uh, definitely spoke volumes by execution-wise by both ball clubs. So a third and 15 faces for recovery. Last third and long, they were able to convert. Thanks to the legs of Holman, is able to keep the play alive. So he found Guggenbiller downfield. We'll see if St. John's is able to get to him here and maybe force the punt. Holman drops back. Long pass across the middle, has it. And Guggenbiller pulls away, just uses that speed. What a ball by Troy Holman as Fort Recovery gets another touchdown. And that's one of the, you know, I mentioned earlier because St. John's defensively was leaving that middle of the field open and, you know, Fort Recovery give them credit. They they found it and executed and nice pitch and catch there and a great, got the touchdown. Yep, a great ball by Holman. A great route run by Guggenbiller. So he was able to get to the inside of the defensive back, coming through on that slant with no safety help. And the key was he didn't have to wait on it. I mean, it was there and on the money, and all he had to do was catch it in stride and try to outrun the defender, which he did, and touchdown Indians. So the last time for recovery went for two, they weren't able to convert. They're going to try again here. Holman takes the snap. Going to hand this one off. It's going to be a reverse. Going to throw it over. And it is good as some trickeration that time by Fort Recovery leads to the conversion on the two point as Holman was able to gather that one in. So 27 14 as Fort Recovery has opened up a little bit of a cushion here. Yeah, that was fun to watch, I'm sure. From a coaching standpoint, it's probably frustrating, but. If you're for recovery, the way you drew it up and the way you executed it, one word for that, that's execution. And I would probably say perfection. Yeah, a little bit of the Philly. Did it very well. Yeah, a little bit of the Philly special that time is Holman showing off all the talents that he has. We've already seen him get it done in the air. We've seen him get it done on the ground. And that time was able to show off his hands in the receiving area as he put that one in for two. 2.23 left to go in the half, though. Still lots of time for St. John's. Their offense has looked good here at times. Uh, they, we've seen some big plays out of them. And it's This is an important drive as St. John's is trying to get some points on the board prior to going into the locker room because start of that third quarter, they're going to have to kick off the Fort Recovery. Well, and that's a tough one right there because third and 15, and St. John's took a timeout because they wanted to get the football back. And unfortunately, they had a breakdown in – the defensive scheme there after the timeout and Fort Recovery took advantage of it and punched it in. Well, and that's a great point because that was two third and longs on that drive that Fort Recovery is able to convert. Kick is on the ground, gathered up quickly, kind of being brought up as that one is 
Number four, Tyler Lindemann gets the return up. So he's going to be at the 40, let's see, they're going to mark that at the 43-yard line. 2.17 left to go as Grant Alm is going to come out and try to lead his team to some points here before halftime. Just one timeout, so they are going to have to have a little bit of a sense of urgency here, but first things first, they got to pick up the yardage. And look for the one-on-one -on -one matchup. This one's just going to go out to the flat. A short gain as the clock will continue to run. Going to be about a two-yard gain this time as Austin Schaefer gathered that one in, but was taken down immediately. I like to use the word hello right there by Mr. Wendell on the stop. Just wanted to say hello. Nice catch, though. Um, and we're going to have a fumble as Fort Recovery is going to collect that one as Alm was hit from behind. And the Indians now have a chance to really open this one up as they're going to have great field position on this possession. Yeah, Steinbrunner did a nice job using the swim move. Blind sign hit on Ohm. He didn't see it coming. Ball went on the deck. Indians with the recovery. See if they can't punch it in with 148 to go. And that's one of them. Ohm just didn't see it coming. It's coming from that backside. Yep, he just needed about another two seconds as he had hit the pump fake, was trying to get the receiver who was going deep on the sidelines. Fort Recovery able to get the pressure to him. Yeah, Force clean hit. Clean hit by Steinbrenner. So now here's Holman. Holman going to roll to the right. Had his own pressure. Has to get rid of it. This one's going to fall incomplete. 143 left to go in the half. Yeah, really good pressure right there. Trying to see who put the pressure on. Appeared to be Alex Martz on the pressure. So with where they're at on the field, for recovery pretty much has the whole playbook open to them. They still have two timeouts, lots of time on the clock with 143. So if you're St. John's, you can't just sell out for the run, or for the pass, excuse me, you got to watch the run as well. So you can see again, no safeties deep. As they got three Ryan receivers at the far sideline. Man's going to come in motion. Going to be a screen. Here's Guggenbiller, catches it. He's going to be wrapped job. up almost immediately. And St. John's did a great job of sniffing that one out. Sure was Riley Mueller. Actually, it was Riley Mueller on the last pass attempt that home, and he was in the backfield. Nice job there. Last two plays by that young man. So four recovery is going to let the clock run here. It's going to be third and eight. St. John's, if they are able to get the stop here, still has the timeout, so they could stop the clock to give themselves some time. So far, third down has not been kind to the Blue Jay defense, though. Rizek goes in motion. Holman going to keep it himself. They're just going to keep it on the ground, try to keep the clock running. St. John's able to get the stop. And no timeout from St. John's. Josh Mueller, Jackson Hurston. You got to think if Coach Schulte is thinking that he's seen that Fort Recovery not afraid to go for it. Don't want to risk stopping the clock and then picking up the fourth down and giving them extra time to work with here. So the clock is going to continue to run. 10 seconds left to go on the play clock, 20 seconds left to go on the game clock. They're just going to let this one go down. Looks like they'll probably just take the delay a game penalty. And I would think we will see a punt out of Fort Recovery. As actually they don't take the penalty. They call the timeout, right, with one second left to go on the play clock. So yeah, he still have to he, think we'll see now Fort Recovery probably go for it, but will probably just keep it on the ground, want to run the clock out. If something opens up, great. If not, that's okay, too. You're going into the locker room ahead two scores, and you get the football coming out. Absolutely. Only 12 seconds left to go. And if you're St. John's, you know, you know that this is a big stop here, and you're going to have some chance to go into the locker room, make some adjustments. You know, they, they've shown in spurts, especially the offense, they can get things going. Really, the, the biggest source of uh, 
probably concern is probably not something you thought it would be, and it's really been the passing attack. We saw the pick six go. They haven't really been getting things going consistently. We saw the big drop earlier in this quarter. The run game, though, has been excellent, and you got to think coming into that second half, we may see them lean on that a little bit more. But first things first, they got to get out of this first half without giving up any more points. Well, I'm like you. You know, everything that happened to St. John's this first half is correctable, both on both sides of the ball. Now here's Holman. He's got four receivers and Wendell. He is going to throw it. This one's going to go out wide as Guggenbiller not able to gather that one in. So St. John's, we'll see what they want to do. They got seven seconds. They're going to try to run something to maybe give themselves an opportunity, maybe just a quick slant, see if they can't get into a foot race and win it. Or if they're just going to maybe just try to keep it in the hands of all. Let the clock run out here and get to uh, the locker room without any more harm coming to them. Well, one thing Fort Recovery's not going to do is they're not going to let a receiver get behind them, that's for sure. Yeah, if they drop three deep, and keep everything in front. Lindemann, he shifts sides. Going to be a handoff. Here's Feathers. Feathers fights through some tackles and just lost his footing. If he could have stayed up there, he had some space. But that is going to bring the first half to a close. The offenses have been on point, but Fort Recovery goes to the locker room on top, 27 to 14. We'll step aside and be back with the second half on WOSA. Welcome back to Champions Field here at Stadium Park in Delphus, Ohio. Today's scoreboard sponsor is Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Nate Garlock alongside Darren Gilbert. And Gil, you know, we saw just about a little bit of everything there in that first half. The offenses looked good. At times it was the defensive stepping up. We saw two turnovers by the Fort Recovery defense that led to what essentially is the difference right now in this game. They got 13 points off of those two turnovers, and we got a 13-point difference here at 27-14. to 14. You hit the nail on the head. That's the difference in the game. You know, when you turn the football over and you give your opponents an opportunity to punch it in, I mean, it, it's created that deficit of the 13 points. St. John's has to regroup and find a way to get it done defensively, and right now, you know, they're struggling to contain Mr. Holman. He's doing it with his arm and with his legs. But the first thing they got to do is they got to take care of the football and and get some sustained drives and do what they do best. And, you know, there's a lot of time left, you know, and this this is a, a rivalry game, and I'm sure both coaches made some adjustments. It's going to be interesting to see what happens here in the second half. Yeah, Delphi St. John's down 13. They're going to have to kick this one away here to open up the third quarter. Fort Recovery able to score on a pick six in the first half. They also have a couple of scores from the legs of Holman. So we'll see that the offense able to come out here and continue. We also saw a long passing strike from Holman to Guggenbiller go for a touchdown as the kickoff is away. It looks like that is Wendell. As Reese Wendell takes this one up, up through the middle, fights through a little bit of traffic, and he is going to be stopped just shy of the 35-yard line. So now Lindemann on the stop there for the Blue Jays, along with uh, Riley Mueller. So now it's the senior quarterback, Troy Holman, coming out to open up the second half. He had a nice first half, as we mentioned a couple of different times, just getting it done on his legs. We saw him able to throw some really nice balls and get things going through the air as well. As coming in, Coach Schulte said that their, one of their keys to being able to win this game was they had to contain Holman, and they've got to make some adjustments here to do that in the second half. Holman takes the snap, going to go to the air. The Indians get this one out to Grise, and he is going to be gone. It is a foot race. Grise along that sideline. Two defensive players from St. John's comes before he is finally knocked out of bounds by Feathers, but not before he gets down to the 12-yard line. Yeah, Feathers and also got chased down by Riley Mueller, but what a outstanding catch and move right there by that young man from Fort Recovery to bust that thing for a absolute long gain. And it all starts with the arm. 
He doesn't mess around with it. You better have your hands ready or he's going to hit you in the face mask. And just a well-thrown ball, great execution by the visitors. Those quick hit screens, they've been trying to get to all day. They've had success every time they've done it, but that was the biggest play so far of the game. Going to go to the opposite side. Guggenbiller changes direction, cuts back into the inside. He is going to go five down to the one, and he is down just shy of the goal line. As right now, Fort Recovery getting things done. Short passing, but picking up big yardage after catch. Well, they're getting in the athlete's hands and, and creating space out in the flat, and they're just using their athleticism and their their balance and breakaway speed. And right now it's tearing up the defense of the Blue Jays. Fort Recovery have them on the one-yard line, first and goal. Holman in the backfield. Going to hand this one off. Guggenbiller going to look for the edge, and he is going to walk into the end zone for another touchdown. Tonight's touchdowns are brought to you by Leland Smith Insurance. Your first call for all your insurance needs. Yeah, Steinbrenner right there with a nice block helping Guggenbiller find the end zone. So Alex Garkey going to come out for the extra point. Didn't take long, did it? It did not. A very quick and efficient drive for Fort Recovery. The long pass play to Grise, followed by another pass over to Guggenbiller before Guggenbiller takes the handoff, puts it in as Garkey gets the extra point to go. It is 34-14, Fort Recovery on top. We will step aside and be back on WOSN. Fort Recovery takes the opening kickoff here of the second half and quickly able to move it down, put seven up on the scoreboard to go on top, 34-14. Delphi St. John's now with an opportunity to answer. Yeah, taking a look down on the sideline. Connor Gagne down there, uniform off, least the pads, walking with crutches. Line drive kick, bounces off of a Blue Jay, but ends up in the hands of Feathers. Feathers, one man to beat. And he can't get around a great job that time by number 53, Owen Kanapke. I Jim. believe he's the kicker partner and saved the touchdown right there. And look that time, if Feathers was trying to get around him, could either go inside or out, chose to go outside, and that might have been a little bit of a mistake, but it still gives Delphi St. John's tremendous field position as they're going to begin on the Indians' 40-yard line. You know, Mr. Kanapke, that's not easy to make that tackle right there, and good job by that young man. He saved a touchdown. So Grant Alb comes out, going to hand this one off. A lot of space. T.J. Wirtz trucks him a player as it looked like that might have been Holman down there coming up from the safety position trying to make that tackle. T.J. Wirtz just ran right through him as he gets down to the four-yard line. Cohen Mertz from his wide receiver position did a great job sustaining his block on that DB, allowing Wirtz to bust that thing all the way down inside the five. So we talked about how efficiently Fort Recovery moved down the field. St. John's trying to better them. Second play of the drive. They're inside the five-yard line. Holm going to call his own number. Goes up the middle into the end zone. Delta St. John's. They saw Fort Recovery make it in three. They said, we can do you better. They get it in the end zone in two. And there's still 10.30 to go in the third quarter. <laughs> Does it not feel like a tennis match here? Back and forth and back and forth. Only a minute 30 off the clock. And Two each touchdowns. team has been able to find the end zone as Braylon Metzger comes out for the extra point. Feathers has to run on a little late as they needed one more player on the line there. Now Metzger is set. Eight seconds left to go on the play clock. Snap is good, kick is down, and it is good to make it 34-21. St. John's keeping it close, trying to stay within striking distance. The defense is going to need to step up, though. We'll be back on WOSA. Welcome back. 
back to Champions Field. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. So each team has been able to take the opening their, their opening drive here of the second half in for a touchdown. Sport recovery now going to take the kickoff. They're trying to work through some space. Gets a couple of extra yards that time. And they will begin their second drive right around the 37-yard line. We had 12 seconds off of the game clock between touchdowns. 10.42 was the scoring time for Fort Recovery. And, and then 10.30 was the score uh, on the score clock for Delphi St. John's as these offenses have been extremely efficient here in the third quarter. Holman comes out, same formation. We've seen him in pretty much this entire game. Going to hand this one off. This one's the Guggenbiller looking for some space. Cuts it back upfield. He's going to be dropped after about a two-yard game. Good job there by the Blue Jays defensively, staying fundamentally sound, stringing it out for the DBs to come up and make the tackle after gaining two yards. Delphi St. John's looking for a stop. The defense has really struggled here this afternoon to be able to contain this offense of the Indians. Second and eight. Rize in motion. Holman pulls it back. And we're going to have a holding penalty. No matter what happens here, is this holding happened in the backfield. So... A decent gain there on second down, but it's going to be negated by a holding penalty in the backfield. It's going to be second and long coming up for Fort Recovery. Yeah, Joel Schrader did a great job, you know, trying to shed that block. And, the, you know, linemen are taught to throw their hands in the air when they feel like they're getting held and makes it easy for the official to see. And Mr. Derryberry saw the hold and immediately threw the flag on the field. That's going to bring up second and 18 now for Fort Recovery. So we've seen Fort Recovery get pushed back into these long yardage situations several different times here this afternoon. But they have been so good being able to pick up chunk yardage, it really hasn't hurt them too much. We'll see if St. John's can change that here. See Holman roll to his right. Going to air this one out just off the fingertips of Guggenbiller. When he let that go, I thought that was easily going to be incomplete. Guggenbiller almost able to bring that one in, though. So we're going to have a third and 18. And, you know, a lot of people say, oh, we're going to put it on the ground. We're going to run. And we'll see what we get. We'll go ahead and punt it off, play a little conservatively. But Fort Recovery, we've seen, at least in that first half, they've been able to convert these third and very longs. Yeah, Guggenbiller right there almost made a one-handed catch. Mr. Odell Beckham right there. He was really close of snatching that one out of midair. Number 12, Joel Schrader had to hop off the field that time. Looked like he was in a little bit of pain as he's going over, being looked at by the trainer. Well, he come in, to, apparently, you know, listening to a couple people in the press box, he come in dinged up, and they weren't even sure he's going to play. Here's Holman. He's going to call his own number. St. John's right there for the stop after a short game and a big defensive stand that time by the Blue Jays. It's going to force the Indians to punt the ball away. Kobe O'Connor with the unassisted solo tackle right there, reaching out, grabbing him by the ankles and bringing him down. Well, Colin Feathers goes back for the Blue Jays. He's going to await the punt as Alex Garkey is going to punt it away. And this is what the Blue Jays needed. They needed to score and get the ball back, and that's exactly what they're going to do right here. We'll have to see how this punt goes, but St. John's looks like they may have pretty good field position here. That one almost blocked by St. John's, and a pretty good punt as this one's going to go out of bounds right around the 39-yard line, but very, very close that time to being blocked by number 24, Riley Mueller. Yeah, he's had a big day for the Blue Jays. That young man came very, very close of batting that one down. So 8-16 left to go here in the third quarter. St. John's finds themselves down 13, but they have the football. And last time they touched it, the offense looked great. Picked up a huge run 
by T.J. Wirtz before Ulm was able to punch it into the end zone. We'll see if they keep it on the ground here. Yeah, it looks like they got Feathers in the backfield right now. Coming into today, Feathers was the leading rusher for the St. John's team, but it's going to be Ulm. Calls his own number, finds a big hole as he is looking to get through some contact as he carries this one all the way down inside the 30-yard line. He's going to get taken down at the 26. St. John's continuing to be able to pick up chunk plays. Garkey running him down in the secondary, saving the touchdown. Alm um, uses his legs so well to create. That time, no hesitation. The line created a nice hole for him. He was able to pick up some big yardage as all the momentum seems to be shifting to the side of the Blue Jays. Well, it's like you said, he did a really good job with his legs finding that seam with vision and just exploded through there. And now here's Feathers on the counter, gets through as full recovery, able to just get a hand on him to slow him down before he's knocked out of bounds, but not before he's able to pick up, looks like, eight or nine yards. And that's going to bring up second and short for Delta St. John's. Yeah, Kanapke and... Garkey on the stop over there at the boundary, but like you said, eight yards, that's that's a chunk right there if you're the Jays. So right now, if you're Delphi St. John's, you got to think that you're just going to go ahead and try to ride this run game until you're forced to throw it. That's where you seem to have the most success. All wait, going to call his own number again. This time, going to try that right side for recovery, though, all over it on the stretch play. And they're going to drop Alm for a loss. Bring Mr. Steinbrenner. Nice play by that young man. So it ends up actually being a four-yard loss, so it's going to be third and six, maybe a little bit closer to third and seven. So big play by the Indians' defense. Alm has 101 up top. We'll see if he tries to exploit that matchup or if they're going to look to keep this on the ground. As we see Colin Feather still in the game in the backfield. Alm going to look, delivers a hit. And that time Alm, instead of waiting for contact, decided to deliver some of his own. And this is going to be close, but I think maybe just shy of the first down. We'll see. They may want to measure this one. Yeah, Garkey on the stop there, but boy, he paid the price, didn't he? He did. That was a heck of a run. Alm saw that one coming, able to get a low, deliver a solid hit to pick up the extra yardage, and now they're signaling first down as Delta St. John's picks up another first down thanks to the tough running of Grant Alm. Yeah, and credit the guys up front for protecting and giving him just enough room in the second effort of Alm and his athleticism to get to the chains. So fresh set of downs. The so ball is marked down at the 17 yard line. Home gets the call. St. John's trailing by two scores, looking to get a little bit closer here. Gonna hand this one off. To, this one's to Feathers. Feathers worked through some traffic up the middle. Another nice gain on first down. As St. John's right now seems to be doing everything Two right. Two really good cutbacks. Nice vision by that young man. Delphi St. John's seems to have made some adjustments. This offensive line creating some holes. As right now the Indians defense don't have much of an answer for this run game from the Blue Jays. Coming up on five minutes left to go here in the third. Play clock at 12. This one's going to go to Wirtz. Wirtz up the middle. Just tries to drag a couple of people with him. But I believe that that is going to be enough. That's going to be, yep, it's going to be marked down at the five-yard line for another first down as T.J. Wirtz carried a couple of guys Evers. with him for some good yardage. Evers and Hartnagel right there on the stop. But yeah, great effort there by that young man. First and goal for the Blue Jays from the five-yard line. Alm, the two running backs in the backfield, going to call his own number. Words with a nice block, 
Extra effort by Ulm as he falls into the end zone. And Delta St. John's back-to-back -back scoring drives. They are back within one score. Again, credit the guys up front. They're opening the seams up, giving him enough room to slither through. And we're seeing a, it's almost a, looks like a different type of team than we did towards the end of that second half. As St. John's seems to be feeling the momentum as Braylon Metzger comes out for the extra point. Snap is down, kick is up, and it is good. So Delphi St. John's takes the second possession in for a touchdown, much like they did with the first. And now it is a 34-28 ball game as the Fort Recovery will have to come out here and see if they can't answer. We're going to step aside. We'll be back on WOSA. Tonight's touchdowns are brought to you by Leland Smith Insurance. Your first call for all your insurance needs. St. John's kicks this one off. As Fort Recovery is on top on the Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard. Nice job by Wendell to move up. He's going to be taken down just past the 30-yard line. They're going to mark it down at the 31. That's where the Indians will come. Last time out, they got their drive pretty much stopped before it could ever get going by a holding penalty as the St. John's defense able to step up and force the punt. Fit row and Young on the stop. Five wide receivers now this time for Fort Recovery. I haven't seen that yet. Holman. Waits for the snap here. Holman going to call his own number. Goes up the middle, works through some traffic. As St. John's was having none of it, able to stop him after a short gain. So those linebackers coming up, filling the hole quickly for the Blue Jays. Second and eight for Fort Recovery. TJ Wirtz on the stop. It's good to see Joel Schrader back in there for the Blue Jays, that left defensive end. Saw him make some big plays. He's a big part of this defensive front for St. John's. Yeah, you can't teach length. You know, he's got them long arms. Quick pass. This one's going to be gathered in. Two missed tackles. It's going to be a foot race. Four recovery down to the 20, right around the 15-yard line as this one went to Isaac Rausner. As Rausner, the first time we've called his name tonight, has a big play on second down. And Fort Recovery, just like that, they are inside the red zone after another first down. Boy, you want to talk about great effort. Mr. Wirtz ran him down, saved the touchdown if you're, you're the Blue Jays. Let's see if the Blue Jays can't stiffen up defensively and try to keep them to at least a three-point attempt here. That's a big play if they, can, if they can buckle down defensively and keep them out of the end zone. Here's Holman. Been impressive. He's been very accurate with the balls he's thrown. Nice change of direction by Guggenbiller, looking for the corner. And I think we're going to have a hold, though, on that back side as it looks like maybe Alex Garkey was trying to block, ends up getting called for the hold. So a nice catch and run is going to be negated by the holding penalty. and It'll be first and long for the Indians. Got a lot of jersey on that one, partner. Great move by Guttenbiller. You know, I think that's what's been so impressive by these uh, wideouts from Fort Recovery here today. You know, not only is Holman able to be accurate, he gets the ball out quickly, but these receivers, they change direction so fast. They are making guys miss. I it's wouldn't not want to yeah, it's not I necessarily want to be the DB. <laughs> exactly. And it, cause it, you know, we've seen a couple of high tackles and, and maybe a couple of those things on some of these runs, but a lot of them has just been the talent and the ability of these Fort Recovery receivers. Shifty and elusive. Another five wide receiver sent for Fort Recovery. Holman takes a snap. He's going to get rid of it quickly. 
going to swing this one out to Wendell. Wendell makes a guy miss, makes another guy miss. This time, and he drags three, four, maybe five different defenders with him for another yard or two. Picks up some pretty good yardage there on second and 13. And it is going to be a third and about six. Schrader and O'Connor on the stop. Schrader almost got his hands on it in the backfield. Excuse me, it's actually going to be, that was on the first down. The holding penalty is that was a first and 13, not second. So it'll be second and five now for the Indians. Yeah, the Indians love to get the, the football out into the flats. That's obvious. And now let's see if they try to find something down the seam. Yeah, they're definitely taking advantage of the cushion that they're getting from the St. John's DBs. Wendell to the right of Holman. He's going to follow his block as Holman, though, is going to be taken down. All right, it looked like he actually kept his footing that time. On the second effort, though, still gets no yardage after maybe about an initial two-yard gain and where they're going to mark it. So it's going to be third and short for the Indians. A minute 30 lets it go here in the quarter. Yeah, Schrader and O'Connor on the stop right there. Here's that third down and three situation. You know, you keep them out of the end zone, force them to kick three. You got to look back at Wirtz and the stop he made, keeping that football from that long touchdown. Holman sends the man in motion. Going to hand this one off. Here's Guggenbiller. Guggenbiller gets stopped behind the line of scrimmage. A big loss that time by the Indians as the St. John's defense comes up big. As it looks like we're going to have an injured Blue Jay player on the field. The trainer's going to come out and check on him. I think it's him. Riley Mueller. And it is. So both teams are going to go over to their benches and talk to their teams as Mueller's going to be attended to, so we'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Andrew Blue Jay is able to walk off the field under his own power. Glad to see that. Brings up a big fourth down, fourth and eight for the Indians. And you got to wonder, you know, here you may try to kick the field goal, but we've already seen them miss once. They've gone for two several different times as the offense is going to come back out onto the field. A big play here for St. John's. See if they are able to get the stop. Holman with five wide receivers. Waits on the snap. Going to drop back. Here comes the pressure. Holman out of trouble. As he's going to be brought down. And yeah, we'll see sure. where they mark it. As Holman with the extra effort after taking a couple of hits. And it's all going to depend on the spot. Yeah, he's about a half a yard short as St. John's able to come up big on fourth down. The Indians come up about a half a yard short as St. John's will take over on downs inside their 10-yard line. But a huge defensive stand, and it all goes back to what you said earlier, partner. That chase down off of Rosser's catch and run comes up big for St. John's. He could have give up on that and let him go, and he run him down and save the touchdown. That's going to be a big play as we enter the rest of this ball game. Nineteen seconds left to go here in the third. All going to hand this one off to Feathers. Feathers fights through some contact, able to get a couple of yards on first down. Going to bring up second and eight, and you can imagine that will be the end of the third quarter as the clock ticks down. Five final five seconds comes off the clock. Hardnagel, along with Kanapke on the stop, and that is going to do it for the third quarter. Belfast St. John's with some big defensive stands. Some nice offense has pulled th themselves back within a one score. We're going to head to the fourth. We'll step aside on WOSA. Welcome back to today's scoreboard sponsors, Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Fourth quarter underway here at Champions Field. Delphi St. John's with the football, second and seven. As they had a very productive third quarter, able to put two scores on the board to pull themselves within six. Here goes Alm. Alm almost able to make the last man miss, but he's tripped up, but not before he picks up first down. As this St. John's offense is clicking right now, especially in this run game. 
Mr. Garkey right there got just enough of the ankle to throw him off balance, or it was going to be a breakaway touchdown right there on the legs of Mr. Ohm. Now Ohm back, back in the shotgun as he sends Lindemann in motion. Feathers gets the handoff. He's going to work up the middle. Colin Feathers not able to pick up too many yards that time. Going to bring up second and eight for the Blue Jays. Evers and Judy on the stop. Now all two running backs in the backfield. Wirtz and Feathers. He gets the call from the sidelines. Reddy's going to hand this one off to Feathers. Feathers up the middle. Going to continue to go, and he fumbles. As we'll see who's able to recover. As actually, I didn't see any of the officials mark it. Like, oh, there's the, there, the beanbag on the field. But Delta St. John's able to fall back on it to keep the ball here. It's going to bring up third and short. Or actually, excuse me, it's going to be third and about four or five. So right around where you might call it. Heck of a scrum after that one, wasn't it? Had no idea who had the football. The Indians defense looking for a big stop here. St. John's looking to continue to keep this drive alive. Been able to do all their damage on the ground here in the second half. All oh, takes the snap, calls his own number, fights out of the first contact. Second contact, takes another hit as he gets right at the sticks. We'll see where they mark him down. It's kind of hard to see where the initial mark is from our side. And it looks like he's going to be about a yard short. So decision time for Coach. Or no, they're going to say first down. So Delphus St. John's comes up with the first down on third and five behind the legs of Grant Hall. Second effort got him that one, partner, because they had him bottled up. He just happened to lean with his upper body and lean with the football, got just enough. And that's a heads headsy play because that he knew where the change in the spot was. Clock continues to run here in the fourth, 9.30 left to go. Delphi St. John's driving, Ohm gonna go to the air. Gonna throw it as this one is in a little bit of trouble as it looked like that might have been Wendell. Reese Wendell got his hands on that one. St. John's fortunate that one wasn't turned over. Yeah, Hartnagel, real athletic play there, got his left hand up there and batted that ball down. You know, I know, you know, I know as, as a coach when you're looking, you're like, you know, we have to try to at least show that we can be a threat through the air, try to keep the defense honest, not trying to sell out on the run. But this St. John's offense has just looked completely different when they have gotten the run game involved compared to when do they go to the air. But here goes Alm. He's going to look to throw it again. Looks like we're going to have a holding penalty. This one gets floated out just out of the reach of number 15. As that was Braylon Metzger. But it, yeah. it looks like regardless of what would have happened, it wouldn't have mattered as we have a holding penalty against Delphi St. John's. Yeah, they brought the pressure, and somebody on the interior got too much jersey. Penalties can be drive killers. As we'll have to see what Delphi St. John's is able to do here, but a big 10-yard penalty pushes the sticks back. It's going to be second and 20 as they have three wide receivers on near the on the near sideline. They're going to go to the air one more time. Wide open, middle of the field, two different players. This one's going to be caught, and he's going to be taken down. That should be enough for first down. Great play design, great execution by St. John's. Well, that's the first time we have seen that initial set. And like you said, great play, great execution there. That's a heck of a play to make up your yardage real quick, yeah. huh? Yeah, and I'm not sure if it was drawn up where they were supposed to have both receivers right there in the same spot, but it worked out great as you had one able to protect as it was, I believe, Lindemann came up with that reception. So the penalty doesn't hurt. St. John's continues their drive here. Under nine left to go in the game. All pulls it down, going to call his own numbers, going to be stopped after about a one-yard game. 
Sport Recovery defense trying to come up with a stop here, trying to halt this momentum that feels like it is completely on St. John's side right now. Wendell and Heidkamp on the stop there for Fort Recovery. Second and eight. Holm getting the call from the sidelines. Takes a snap, gonna hand this one off. Wirtz, lots of space on that left side, makes one guy miss. And he is taken down right around. I believe they're gonna mark him down at the 35 yard line, a big pickup. You know, that all started with Braylon Metzger with a great block right there, springing his teammate to the outside. Nice, nice execution by that young man. First and 10 from the 35 for the Blue Jays. Alm has feathers in the backfield with him, four wide receivers. Play changing again real quick. Play clock, down to one. They get the snap off, Alm calls his own number. Right up the middle. And he gets about three on the carry. Breaker Judy on the stop. Yeah, I'll tell you what else is happening here, though, with St. John's. This drive, they continue to keep it alive. They're keeping it on the ground. More importantly, though, they are keeping the clock running. If they're able to cash this one in and get the points. Well, you got the three-headed monster, too, you, you know? Yeah, that's right, and you do not want to give Fort Recovery a lot of time if you are able to take the lead. You got you got to take care of Ulm, you got to take care of Wirtz, and then you got Feathers now. Under seven to go in the game. Oh, keeps it himself. Works it back up off the left side. He gets out across the 25-yard line, and it looks like we'll have to see here on the spot. One official stop just short of the 25. Yeah, Garkey got just and enough it, of his ankles. Yeah, just enough. It looks enough. like it's going to be third and one for the Blue Jays. Good job by the offensive line right there, securing their blocks, opening up that seam for Alm to get through. Clock though continuing to run. You got two downs here to pick up a yard. Take your pick, who's gonna take the ball here, you know, in the backfield. I think right now you're just gonna let Alm go right up that middle, I think. No, yep it is. That's oh, little, nice tackle. It is, I was a little surprised when he started to drop back, like maybe he was gonna look to throw that one, but. Instead, calls his own number for recovery with the good defense as Alm is stopped for no gain. And I know that St. John's doesn't go under center, but if you've ever practiced it, if you feel even slightly comfortable with it, this seems like a nice time to put him under center and just get the push. Yeah, give a lot of credit to Gavin Evers right there, get, you know, getting his hat in there and you know, knocking him down before he got to the chains. We're pleased to announce new pricing for the WOSN streaming service. For only $8 per month, you can watch WOSN from anywhere at any time. Sign up today at app.wosn.tv. It's also available on Roku and Apple TV. It is a great way to catch up on all the area, uh, different sports and teams and all the different things that we cover. You, know, you may not be able to pick it up on you know whatever your cable service might be, but a great way to be able to continue to watch the plethora of games that we bring to you as we move through the fall and then into the winter and then finally with the spring. It is a great time of year. Love all the high school sports going on and we have absolutely as much as we possibly can bring to you here on WOSN. Well, it's not only, it's not only that, you get the opportunity in the, in the fall to watch the high school bands and during the competition of the games and pep bands and cheerleaders during the basketball season, as well as football, the cheerleaders. Like you said, it's a, it's a great plethora of sports. Fourth and one. And they're gonna run right up the middle. And it looked like he was down even after he picked that up, but somehow squirts through. As, It actually, 
That is actually Boggs, excuse me. I think we've been calling Alms num uh, number when it's really been Boggs who's been in there doing some of this heavy lifting for St. John's as Alms is actually on the bench. Not sure what happened to him, but right now on this very important drive, it is it is Drew Boggs uh, trying to lead this Blue Jay team down for a score. Wirtz on the carry on first down. You got to give Boggs a lot of credit. He's able to come in, pick up first down, comes in on this big drive. Well, we know he's athletic. We saw that defensively in the first half. But yeah, to come in in this situation, you got to believe they're going to give it to the big thoroughbred in the backfield right here and see what he can do with it. So second and nine now. Ball is on the 16-yard line. Box going to pull this one down. He is going to be stopped right at the line of scrimmage, maybe even a loss of a yard to bring up third and long. 4.20 left to go. Kanapke and Evers on the stop. And it actually looks like we're going to have another player down. Official timeout on the field as the injured Blue Jay player is going to be treated. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Nights and St. Replays are brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpaw, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Yeah, you got to believe if you're for recovery, excuse me, you want to put Boggs in a situation to have to throw the football. That's exactly what they're looking to do. Pass over the top of the defense. T.J. Wirtz with the huge catch and touchdown. Yeah, that's something to get excited about because I'll tell you what, he threaded the needle over three silver helmets right there. What a nice pitch and catch. Lee Samuels recipe chicken in Lima, Walpark, Delphus, and St. Mary. A big extra point here for Braylon Metzger to give the Blue Jays the one point lead. And we are going to have a St. John's timeout. As Coach Schulte want to talk about it. And I'll tell you what, I think the key to that was, you know, you talked about how, you know, for recovery would want to put Boggs in a position where he has to throw it. I don't think they were ready for that throw. And the fact that Boggs was able to get rid of it so quickly, they didn't have time to adjust to knowing that a pass was coming. And it, I think it just caught him off guard. Well, and I think you're in a situation where I think they were playing eight in a box. You know, and he went with a little ball fake. And that drove the secondary and the linebackers up and let, who was that, Words get, get behind him yep. at the end zone. And it was great ball, good placement just over top, just out of the reach of the secondary, able to gather that one in. And it was an interesting timeout here by Coach Schulte. If nothing else, maybe just wanted to make sure everybody had it's a on second. The same page. Take yep. a break, take a breath, make sure everybody had the chance to kind of calm those nerves prior to this. Is This extra point is obviously huge. Not bad for a kid that has not taken many snaps at quarterback, you know, at the varsity level, to thread the needle like that. Yeah, according to the stat sheet that we have, Drew Boggs has not attempted a – oh, excuse me, I'm looking at the wrong one. Let me see if I can find their stat page here. So we wait for Metzger's extra point. And it is blocked for recovery. Gets it. Not able to advance it. And that is going to keep this one tied. Fort Recovery comes after it. They are able to get their hands on it. And this game all tied up at 34 with 3.56 left to go. We're going to have a timeout on the field. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back to Champions Field. Tonight's scoreboard is brought to you by Wabash Mutual Telephone. Wabash Mutual Telephone is a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. During that break, was able to find the uh, stats page that we had and were able to confirm that is not only is it Drew Boggs, uh, it's first everything. It's his first attempted pass this season, first touchdown. He is one for one with a touchdown this season and a great time to have that happen. Well, how big a stop was that for Fort Recovery right there on that blocked extra point? You know, it takes you out of the panic mode of being down one point with under four minutes to go to being able to hold your composure to get a sustained drive going. So now we are all tied at 34, 350 left to go in the game. 
The St. John's defense has been coming up big here in the second half. They need another stop here. Meanwhile, Holman, it's been a while since he's been able to shake loose. Almost kind of feeling like he is due here. Yeah, going to lean on the senior. Both his athleticism and his leadership. Got his favorite target down here near us. In motion. Guggenbiller in motion, does take that handoff. St. John's all over that one, though. Take him down there, will take him down right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a one yard loss. As we have a, another St. John's player injured, he is down. 3.37 left to go. Going to be second and 10 for the Indians. That's good we, to see that young man get up under his own power, walking off for the Blue Jays. Holman waits for the snap back in the shotgun. Four wide receivers. And he has Reese Wendell in the backfield with him. Going to get rid of this one quickly. There's, as St. John's all over that pass play, quickly shut that one down. That's going to be a loss of one on the play to bring up third and 11 as this St. John's defense coming up big here late in the fourth quarter. You know, as this continues to go, obviously St. John's only one play away from potentially getting this one back. Big stop there by Cohen March. They've done a really good job taking that away. With the exception of those couple missed tackles, they've done a good job neutralizing everything. Third down, not being kind to St. John's. We'll see what they can do here. They get pressure in the backfield. Holman gets away, can't get away a third time. Yes, he does. Somehow he gets away, but Holman is not happy as he continued to play, but the officials whistle it dead, saying that his momentum was stopped. And Holman not happy with that call, feeling like he was still able to move around. But a huge loss on third down brings up fourth and very long. The Indians are going to have to punt this one away. Well, and I think in the opinion of the official, they had him by the ankles. Not only one, but two players did. Holman's credit, he got away from it. But the official yeah, felt I don't, like that momentum was stopped there, and he blew the whistle. Yep, yeah, that's a tough call as Holman, we've seen him be so elusive. A high punt on, or a high snap on that punt. He's able to get away pretty cleanly. Fair catch, we'll see if we have a flag. We say no, and the officials say no, that there's no fair catch interference where it looked like there might have been some little bit of contact. You know, even on the fair catch, you still have to give them a few yards. Looked like that was not the case that time. But either way, St. John's gets the football back with 142 left to go. And it looks like Boggs is still out there as Grant Ulm appears to have some sort of injury. And we will see what St. John's is able to do here. They have one timeout left, a minute 42 left to go, and they got to go about 62 yards for the score. We know that they can kick the field goal, but in the back of your mind, that missed or that blocked extra point has to be looming large. Boggs sends a man in motion. Going to hand this one off. Here's Feathers looking for some space. Cuts it back up. Gets across midfield, but not before he picks up first down. Clock will stop as the chains get set. St. John's has to go quickly. And you got to think, you know, we've seen St. John's do the hard count every single time. But when, you know, things matter the most here for time, you got to think we're going to stop seeing that. And maybe that might get the defensive line a step or two slow. Boggs going to throw again, able to complete his first pass, trying to keep this one alive. He is now two for two in his high school career, and they're going to say no, out of bounds. As Metzger not able to get either one of his feet down prior to going out of bounds. You know, high school, you only have to have the one foot, but it looked like uh, the official said neither one touched. Clock stops, second and 10. And he's on top of it. I mean, he's right there within five yards to make that call. So if nothing else, at least the clock does stop on that incompletion. Pretty athletic play, huh? It was, Boggs. My goodness. Boggs looks a lot more comfortable back there than I think people thought he might, considering the situation he stepped into. Going to drop back, going to have to throw. Looks for some space, rolls. Going to have to pull this one down. He's pretty elusive. Goes down a minute five left to go. St. John still has a timeout. 
As Coach Schulte runs over, able to get that timeout quickly. Guggenbiller on the stop along with Reese Wendell. So Coach Schulte takes the timeout, a minute two left to go. It's gonna be third and five for the Blue Jays coming out of this timeout. They are on the 44-yard uh, line. I'll tell you what, Gil, Drew Boggs, that kid has come in and he's looked really good. I mean, he came in the previous drive, some uh, injury looks like it happened to all. We're not sure what happened with him. But it, we got some word that they took off his shoulder pads in his jersey. They were looking at his shoulder. Not sure to the extent, but obviously bad enough where he can't be in the game. So here comes Drew Broggs. He comes into the game. Cool as ice, huh? I mean, makes, makes a couple of big runs, picks up a first down, then completes his first ever pass for a touchdown. And now here he is trying to lead a game-winning drive. 102 left to go, all tied at 34. St. John's using their last time out. If he's nervous, he's not showing it. Absolutely not. And you can tell Coach Schulte, they're just gonna put in his hands. They're not trying to be conservative, not trying to play for overtime. They're letting him take some shots to see what happens. See what Ford recovery does. I'm curious defensively here on this possession. Boggs gonna drop, he's gonna throw it. Puts it in the air and that's picked off. Guggenbiller gets in front of it. And now with 54 seconds and three timeouts, Fort Recovery is going to take over. As Boggs that time when it left his hands, you could tell that it was fluttering. He went to the far side of the field. That stayed in the air a very long time. And Guggenbiller was able to get on top of it, pick that one off. We saw the two big um, turnovers in the first quarter that led to points for Fort Recovery. And now another turnover gives them an opportunity to get the win. But I'll tell you what, partner, we have yet to see them be able to kick. You wonder what kind of confidence they have in that right. kicking game, whether or not they're thinking we have to get this in the end well, zone. Well, I wanted to mention right there, Metzger right there saved the touchdown. If he doesn't make that tackle, the attendant, the, the receiver that the, the tip was to, that's a touchdown for, for uh, Fort Recovery. Jose gets the reception that time, but for a short game, Fort Recovery is going to save the timeout. They're just going to try to go quickly. Yeah, you got to figure they got to get about 40 yards. They have three timeouts. A little shocked they're letting this much time come off the clock. Holman going to go to the air again, this time to Guggenbiller. Guggenbiller looks like he's going to get the first down. Clock will start as they move the chains, and Fort Recovery is going to take the timeout anyway. So the Indians take the timeout. They're going to want to talk about it. 27 seconds left to go. At some point, you expect them to try to take a shot. You feel like they got to pick up a chunk play, at least one, maybe two, to get themselves in position here with the amount of time that's left on the clock. Well, if my, if my math serves me correctly, they're at the 45. You got to feel comfortable if they can get another 30 yards. That would put them at the 15. Seven yards back is 22, and then add 10 to it. That'd be a 32-yard attempt. We've already seen them miss one extra point, though, here today. So every every yard is going to matter. Still have two timeouts, though. And there's no guarantee that the kick could be blocked, too. You know, the way this game is played out, blocked extra point, okay. interception, interception, missed tackles. I mean, it's just been all kinds of things today in this contest. Everybody up for St. John's. Now Metzger drops back to play that safety position. Holman just going to pull it down himself. Going to try to run it. He picks up about three. Fort Recovery takes another timeout. 19 seconds left to go. A very back and forth game all night long. Fort Recovery comes out quickly. They're able to drive it, or excuse me, St. John's took the opening kick, drives it downfield. They're able to score. Fort Recovery, their ensuing opening possession. They go down and answer. They then get a turnover for a pick six. Well, I think he wanted to throw that ball down the seam and they rolled somebody over the top in a two deep situation. And he did the smart thing and not tried to, not trying to throw it into traffic there and just secured it himself and tried to get as much as he could. Yeah, I think the late drop by Metzger really kind of threw off that play calling that time. 
You know, recapping the uh, scoring as Fort Recovery then up 13-7. And then we go back and forth. Fort Recovery goes into the locker room up 27-14. They come out, St. John's gets the stop, takes the first two drives of the second half in to make it a one-score game. And then after an injury to starting quarterback Grant Alm, Drew Boggs comes in, able to finish off a long drive for the Blue Jays to tie this one up at 34. For recovery, able to block that extra kick and gets us where we are here with 19 seconds left to go as Fort Recovery is looking to put themselves in position to hopefully win this game. Long pass towards the far sideline. This one's gonna be dropped. 15 seconds left to go. Yeah, that was a difficult catcher. That one was one of those down there by the shoelaces. If, if he's threw a ball today that he probably wishes he had back, it would be that one right there. One spot you're not going to get, it's down the seam. If you look what St. John's is doing right now. And they're trying to keep everything Absolutely. in front of them. Absolutely. Three back, not letting any big plays happen. We've seen Fort Recovery able to break a lot of tackles, though. But here, we're going to have a false start prior to the snap. So Fort Recovery is going to get pushed back five yards. Actually, partner, I think they got him with the delay game. Oh, and you're right, it was. That play clock got too far down, didn't get the snap off. Now third and 12 facing the Indians with 15 seconds left to go. St. John satisfied with only bringing three here. Both of these teams looking to break losing streaks. St. John's have lost two in a row. Fort Recovery still looking for their first win of the season. Holman, quick pass to the outside. And all of a sudden, for recovery, not able to catch the football. We've seen them really not have any problem on those swing passes all night. But here late in the fourth, coming up with some big drops. 12 seconds left to go. And it is fourth and 12. Can't imagine they're going to punt unless they're just going to go ahead and feel like they can settle for overtime here. Yeah, I think maybe this one just might be might be a quick pass. Try to see if maybe they can't shake something loose. Worst case scenario, you run a bunch of time off. Don't leave St. John's any, any time left to try to do anything. Yeah, because St. John's has burned their timeouts here. So here we go, fourth and 12. Holman passes it quickly out. Here's Grise. He picks up the first down. Gets out of bounds with six seconds left to go. Great play design that time. As I think everybody here in the press box kind of thought we were heading for overtime, but Fort Recovery says not quite yet as they pick up the first down. Ball is going to be on the 34-yard line as Fort Recovery will take their third and final timeout. With that timeout, we'll step aside as well. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back to today's scoreboard sponsors, Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Six seconds left to go for recovery with the football on the 34-yard line. We are tied at 34. We'll see what Fort Recovery chooses to do if they try to get a little bit closer on a quick shot on the outside to stop the clock or if they're just going to go for it here. Or trickery. Holman takes a snap. He's going to get rid of it quick. Night, fat, nice pass to the outside. Only three seconds comes off the clock. And so now they're going to have to go for the end zone, but they are a little bit closer. And no, they're going to try the long field goal here, it looks like. So the wind is actually going towards uh, the... It's behind them, isn't it? Yeah, it's going from 46 behind. 46-yarder. 46-yard field goal. And we'll see what happens here. Now, if St. John's is able to get a hand on this one, we could have something going the other way as well. So a lot happening here. The kick is up, and that one's not going to be enough as that one's going to fall short. I'll tell you what, had a lot more leg on it than it looked like coming off as it got to that back white line, but it was off line and short. And that is going to bring the fourth quarter to a close. 
It's going to be 34-34 tie, and we are going to head to overtime. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Wabash Mutual Telephone, a proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. It is overtime football here at Champions Field in Delphus. It is Canal Day's weekend, and we are getting the festivities started off right here. Saturday afternoon football, a back and forth affair. Delphus St. John's will begin with the football here at the 20-yard line. Each team will get a possession, just like the college overtime rules. And they got to match each other until one team gets the better end of it. Big story here going into overtime. Starting quarterback Grant Alm is out with an apparent shoulder injury. Drew Boggs has come into the game. Threw a touchdown pass earlier, but did have the interception at the end of the fourth. He's going to run this one into some traffic. Going to be stopped after a short to no gain. Evers and Kanapke on the stop. Now looks like Fort Recovery comfortable kind of sending guys into those gaps. Not really being, doesn't look like they're overly concerned about the throwing uh, of Boggs yet. As they're going to have to call some things quick here. Eight seconds left on the play clock. Now down to five. Boggs going to have to get rid of it. Two. And they do get the snap off. He's going to go to the air. Going to throw it up high. Jump ball. And just out of the hands. Uh, that is number three, Cohen Martz, as Martz looks like he had it for a second. A great defensive play by Fort Recovery to knock that one loose. Grice says on the stop right there defensively, nicely thrown ball, but a better defensive play getting that deflection. That was a nice ball by Boggs that time to get up. It's going to be third and ten. St. John's is able to pick up a first down here. You know, and they got the matchup they wanted. They got a one-on-one -on -one situation because the corners are pressing right now. And they took the shot. They were looking, going to go again. Boggs have to get rid of it. Nice swing out to Wirtz. Wirtz makes the man miss, shakes him loose inside the 10. Little hesitation step, dies for the pylon. And we're waiting on the signal. Touchdown, Delta St. John. That's just great effort right there. That second, third effort, his explosion and his strength and his will to find the end zone. Big play. And don't you find it fitting? He's the one that had, to, had that game save, or that touchdown saving tackle and kept them out of the end zone. And for him to get rewarded like that here in overtime to get a touchdown. Now awesome here is that young man. Braylon Metzger comes out. Last extra point was blocked. Able to get this one up and just out of the reach of the Fort Recovery defense. As St. John's goes up 7, 41 to 34. And I'll tell you what, even more impressive about that run, you cannot try to tackle TJ Wirtz up high. They were up around the shoulders and he just shook them off. He is strong. The nice little hesitation move. T.J. Wirtz was not going to be denied that time as he was looking for the end zone. I'd love to see him in the weight room. You know what I'm saying? I'll bet you his squats and everything is unbelievable. You could just tell by his lower body and his hips and quads. Yeah, he's a strong, strong young man. So now it is Fort Recovery's turn as they will get the ball on the 20-yard line. They have to match the output. they got to come away with at least seven here to keep this one going as the uh, St. John's defense is looking to come out and trying to come up with the stop. Lots of weapons available to Troy Holman. We've seen him get things done in a lot of different ways. He has weapons all over the field. We'll see what the Indians offense can come up with. Holman in the backfield. Going to go to a quick strike out to Grise. Grise moves around. He's ended up taking down. He's going to be stopped. Looks like they're going to mark him down around the 13-yard line to make it second and short. 
you know, we saw them for whatever reason struggling right there in that last drive of the fourth quarter with that exact play. But other than that drive, it has been there all night long. They've had a lot of success. They've done a great job of making the St. John's defense miss tackles out there in space. And you see it there one more time. Yeah, Holman got it in the spot where he got it to his receiver where he could get his hands on it versus the first couple times around the ankles. Holman going to go to the other side. This tried to go to the back shoulder this time of Grise, which is the right call because I think if he throws that to the inside, that might get picked off. Well, and I'm wondering how much he would have got because I'm telling you, the defender was bearing down on him as that football was approaching the receiver. So now third and three. It's Holman brings the offense up. Looks like he's going to have double wide receivers on either side. Wendell in the backfield with him. Need to pick up three yards here on third down. Rize was in motion. Holman kept it himself. Guess who? There was some hesitation there for whatever reason, and Holman is stopped for no gain to bring up fourth down. Riley Mueller. Again, that kid has played one, one great ball game today. He's been all over it defensively and special teams. An incredible play by the sophomore right there. Comes up big for St. John's as the Indians, they want to take a timeout here on fourth down to talk about it. We'll step aside as well and be back on WOSA. Nights and St. Replays are brought to you by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpole, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where Homestock happens here. Fourth and four faces the Indians. 41-34. They can pick up a first down to keep the drive alive, but if Delphus can get the stop, they're going to come away with the victory. Holman takes the snap. He's going to drop back, going to go to the air. They're going to go for the end zone. It's a jump ball, and that one's knocked down. Duffus St. John preserves the victory here in overtime. Big play by the secondary right there, getting their hands on that football, denying Fort Recovery an opportunity to get that thing into the end zone. Delphus St. John's found themselves down to 27-14 coming into the second half, and they found a way to win. Not only did they come from behind, they had to do it with the backup quarterback who had yet to throw uh, uh, throw any sort of pass yet this year. He throws a touchdown pass. He leads them on scoring drives. They get themselves into overtime, and the defense makes enough Pl plays. Play through adversity. You know, injury after injury. It started with, what, the wide receiver with, with his knee. Then you lose. You know, Ulm, and then you have some interior linemen get dinged up. You got to hats off to both teams. They laid it all on the line. You know, Fort Recovery, I know, is going to walk out of here disappointed, but they can take a lot of good things from this, as well as St. John's. You know, stranger things have happened. We said in pregame, St. Henry got in last year at 2 and 8 in the playoffs. He got 16 teams in each region. You know, you get on a little roll, you beat the right team you can put yourself in a position to make that 16-team field for the playoffs. Floor recovery is going to fall to 0-5 overall, 0-3 in conference play. They have played now three one-score games. That can be the difference, though. They have a two-point loss earlier in the season, an eight-point loss, and now here a seven-point loss. So this is a very good Fort Recovery team. This is a good win for St. John's. They started off the season 2-0. They had put up a lot of points, but they had really struggled with their last two games. I mean, they took a big step up in competition, obviously, um, with who they played and why it was so difficult to uh, score. They had some a lot of injuries that they've been trying to overcome. They have guys that are really gr uh, gritting through some things. They had some additional injuries tonight, but I'll tell you what, the versatility of this Blue Jay team really showed tonight as they come away with a huge victory. Absolutely. And to get one here at home, you know, on a beautiful afternoon and just a lot of points. And if you're if you're one of these people that likes to see points, you got your money's worth today, no question. 
So that is just going to about wrap it up for us here at Champions Field as Delphi St. John's defends the home turf, and they come away with the 41-34 victory in overtime against the Fort Recovery Indians. We'd like to thank our WOSN crew doing a great job for us as always. Jacob and Zach on the cameras. Nick back in the studio doing all the editing. You guys do the hard work. we got the easy stuff to do. We get to watch the games and talk about it. And we appreciate all the things that you guys do for us. One final time, Delta St. John's victorious, 41-34 in overtime. Thanks for tuning in, and have a great night, everybody.